Welcome everyone, this is Curtin's channel. Now we are back to our new episodes of two semi-rounded captions and comparisons featured by YG, Lake of Legends versus the Mobile Legends by Gang. But before that, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell button so you will be notified to our new next episode video. Let's do this! While there are around 5 ways to build Twisted Fate, I'll focus on two of the most common, and they'll have somewhat different builds, but perform the same role. First, let's look at magic damage and attack speed. Here, I have a fairly standard caster type setup. Magic penetration, hit points per level, cooldowns, and flat health quintessences, followed by a 9021 mastery build, which you can see here. I take cleanse and ghost as summoner spells, allowing me to escape or catch up to enemies when I need to. Right at level 6, you should teleport back to base. Typically, some unlucky enemy will be gankable with destiny. Let's look for the factors here. I have level 3 stacked deck and have it set up so that my next attack will deal with bonus damage. I lock gold card, hit destiny, find an opponent, and gate to a Akali. The position of my teleport is also very important. If Akali chose to turn around, I'd be able to escape the tower without taking too much damage. However, I'm in her way just enough that even with Flash, I'm able to spike her for over 200 damage on a single attack. Once again, I look for a gank with Destiny. Again, I'm within two attacks of hitting stacked deck. With the gold card locked, I know the bonus damage is guaranteed. This time, I know Akali won't see me coming as I gate into the brush, so I can safely lead her movement. Additionally, the Destiny reveal means Akali is not able to evade us with stealth. With Ryze's help, I succeed in my second Destiny gank of the game. And due to my successful ganking, we head to Baron Nasher at the 15 minute mark. While most of the damage comes from the extremely fast Mavra's Blood Razor, you can still use Pick a Card for damage here. However, try to use Blue Card. Baron Nasher is immune to debuffs, so Red and Gold have no extra effect on him. As a fight breaks out during our push, I make use of Cleanse and Ghost to escape Annie's burst damage. I am also able to break free from Warwick with Shen's help. And, you can see how quickly Twisted Fate can drop individual targets under concentrated attacks. Unfortunately, I screw up and walk directly into the battle instead of attacking. But, when the going gets tough, you just use Destiny and Gate. We rush into the jungle to pick a fight. Even tanky champions like Nasus can fall extremely quickly to the magic DPS Twisted Fate build. As he dies, I have to escape Warwick once again, using Cleanse and Ghost and then Gold Card he's picked up for another kill. After my opponents realize they've overextended, they start to retreat. However, I cast Destiny and patiently wait for Akali to commit to a single direction of retreat. As I gate to cut her off, she turns around and runs directly into my teammates and gets hit for over 300 damage with stack deck and pick a card. Once again, we run for another Baron kill. Note that Baron respawns 7 minutes after death, so we make sure to jump on him within 60 seconds of his respawn. Alternatively, if you want to focus on physical damage, swap magic penetration for armor penetration, cooldown reduction for flat magic resist, and change your mastery to 2109, making sure you still get the magic penetration mastery, but just feel free to give up attack speed for it. For summoner spells, I find that a mix of selfish spells, like Ghost, Cleanse, and Flash, give you the most staying power. Remember that your job is to deal damage, and the longer you stay alive, the more benefit you are to your team. Here we start a new game with a new level 6 game. Again, I'm within two attacks of stacked deck, I've locked the gold card, and I destiny close to Anivia. Even with Flash, Cleanse, and Rebirth, my damage output is just too awesome. While attacking the golem with Jax, Shaco pokes his head out. I switch focus to the Jack of the Box so that we don't get feared, and then chase him down with a gold card to grab us a kill. As my team does battle in the bottom of the map, I aim to gate in. 
I let Destiny sit for a bit after locking Gold Card, hoping my opponents will split up for an easier kill. The battle disperses and we fight Lizard for a short time, but we get attacked again. Thanks to my last Whisperer in damage from Pickaxe and Stacked Deck, even the 118 armor Shen drops very quickly. Anivia falls and I jump onto Ash. Because of Ghost and Cleanse, she almost gets away, but Ezreal lands a nice true shot barrage to clean up. We attempt to kill Baron Nasher, but are quickly ganked by our enemies. I'm sure to stun Shaker with Gold Card, and then Cleanse out of Exhaust and Randuin's Omen. Wild Cards and Gold Card net me a kill on Shen. Akali dies to Concentrated Effort soon afterwards, but as I go to support the rest of the fight, Anivia and Ash are just getting away. Thankfully, I have Destiny out, and there is no way Ash is getting away from Gold Card and Stacked Deck. Let's take a break for some mechanics. Early in the game, you really want to abuse Blue Card. It refunds all but 10 mana, making it essentially free if you use the ability. The bonus damage makes last hitting a breeze. Normally, Twisted Fate has pretty poor base damage, so being able to hit for 77 damage at level 1 is really valuable. Once you hit level 2, you want to start playing the stacked deck minigame. Last hit as you normally would until you've built your third deck charge, where you now have 110 damage to last hit. Is he has some crowd control built in, so we'll talk about these abilities a little bit later, but he can stun people. Um, and then he's also a semi-burst mage um, at medium range. I wouldn't say he's really long range, he's not super bursty. Um, he has some burst aspects to him and you can poke people. But the real, um, the real cool thing about Twisted Fate is that you can basically transport yourself all over the map with your ultimate and help out your teammates and influence the map at a, at a larger scale. So, um, as these minions kind of crash, you won't worry too much about CS to start, just because we're going to cover off some abilities. But his passive is Loaded Dice, and upon killing a unit, Twisted Fate rolls his Lucky Dice and gets a little bit of extra gold um, when he last hit a minion. So this right off the bat kind of shows you that Twisted Fate is somebody who really wants to kind of farm a little bit more safely in lane, um, not be so aggressive and look to trade too often. You just want to kind of use that passive to get a little bit of gold and get some items, because your job really is almost like a full level map support champion. Right, you want to influence other lanes and influence the map. So you'll see here with our Lotus Dice passive, if we last hit a minion, you get a little bit extra gold. That time it was three, this time it might be six, right? So it just helps you kind of get some gold and farm. So that's a cool aspect to it. Um, let's learn his first ability here. Generally in lane, the first ability you want to lose, though, so each card does something slightly different. The blue card does the most damage and refills some of your mana, okay? The the yellow card stuns and deals the least damage. So there's that trade-off, right? The blue heal or gives you more mana and also deals the most damage. The yellow stuns and deals the least damage. The one in between those two is the red card. This kind of does a little bit of both. It gives you a little bit more damage than the yellow, a little bit less damage than the blue, and it also slows um, the units in its radius of hit. So it, it's not quite a full stun. So we'll kind of experiment with these now. So you'll see here, if we use the red, it'll clear out more damage in a radius around where we initially hit. And then if we use the gold, we'll get a stun, right? Stun, right? So that's kind of how you want to use these three abilities for mana and you want more damage, use the blue card, right? If you want to potentially deal a lot of damage to, to a clumped up minion group or champions and slow them all, you can use your red. If you want to stun somebody and run away, you use your, your gold card, okay? So we have to talk a little bit more about those uh, aspects because that's what really makes uh, Twisted Fate a unique character. A little bit less unique of an ability would... Um, this is a skill shot that deals damage to basically uh, three lines out from your character out from fire. So you can use it to clear minions out, you can use it to poke champions, um, you can use it for a little bit of that semi-burst that we talked about. Uh, it's just a good ability to, to clear minion waves, to get last hits if you can't kind of get close enough to, to last hit minions with your auto attacks, and it also lets you poke champions down and kind of whittle down their health bar. So the best way you'd want to use this is kind of if they're going for a last hit on a minion, so if he's going to go for a last hit on one of these minions in the tower, you kind of throw it out at him. Either he's going to take the damage or he's going to miss the minions. Basically, 
it's an auto attack enhancer. Every four attacks, your basic attack deals a little bit extra damage. It's not really a big thing with Twisted Fate. If you're building an attack damage instead of ability power, you might want to look to max this ability out and do some different things with it. It also gives you passively a little bit more attack speed. It's not a huge deal, right? Um, one other thing you can use the passive for where every four hits you'll see the deck of cards kind of start to, to rotate around your body on the bottom like this. You can use the guarantees and last hits on some minions if you're having trouble last hitting with just this basic auto attacks. Okay, so now that we know those three uh, abilities, we'll talk about a basic trading combo for Twisted Fate in lane. If you're playing against a melee champion like this, you can really have your way with them and abuse them quite easily. What you want to do is you want to look to lock in a gold card as you're walking up to them. Stun them, cue them, auto attack them once, and then kind of start to back away, right? That's your basic trade. So you want to stun them, throw a cue at them for some of that poke damage, and then walk away. That's kind of where we were talking a little bit earlier about how Twisted Fate is a semi-burst. You can see it's not really the greatest amount of damage, but it's enough that if you do it at like three, four times in a row in lane, it'll start to chunk them out a little bit. So you have to play patiently with Twisted Fate. He's actually a very squishy champion, and you don't want to get too close to the enemy champions in lanes. Make sure you get last hits on minions, farm up, use your passive to get extra gold, and work towards your first item so you can get a little bit more powerful. Okay, so um, we have a little bit of gold now. We might head back to base and buy. Before we do that, I'll just learn our level 6 ability here, which is Destiny. And this is like the real gimmick of Twisted Fate as a champion. So it grants true sight of all champions on the map for 6 seconds. So you can see where every, you can see right now the blue circle on my mini-map. This is the outer bounds of where I can travel. So not quite to the edges of the lane yet. But if you walk down a little bit, for example, you can go into this lane down here and try, uh, try and do a gank and help them out. So we'll recall and we'll, uh, we'll buy some items and we'll head back to lane here. Um, in general, you want to max your ability first. It deals the most damage you're going to be using it to poke and hit last, uh, last hits on minions and kind of do semi-burst trades. So you want to max your, your Q first generally with Twisted Fate. So as we head back to lane, um, one thing to note, you could use your uh, ultimate ability death back to lane a little bit quicker if you wanted to. I'd like to more save it to influence other areas of the map and get some kills and help my other lanes win, so we'll try and save it for that. But you can see here we'll do our combo again, yellow card, hit him, auto attack. So we're not worrying too much about last hits here, I know we're missing a lot of them. You guys should obviously concentrate a little bit more on that while you're playing him. We're just running through the ability and some trade patterns.